Uh, very, very funny stuff, and it is just the tip of the iceberg, I guarantee. You'll want to check this out. It is a very good film. And uh, we've got an amazing actress here today, one of the most charming human beings on the planet. Let's give it up for Anna Kendrick. Come on up, Anna. <laughs> I hear classy and charming, and I'm like, that's me. <laughs> I'm going. Well, when you see that trailer, this movie yeah. is nothing but class. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a together lady. I'm a functioning adult, and everything's going great. It's perfect for you. I don't cry myself to sleep. <laughs> We're talking about the uh, character or you? You know what, Josh? <laughs> Semantics. <laughs> so um, it might surprise some people to know that, uh, looking at that trailer, this is very loosely based on at least a, a, a germ of a it's true a, thing. Yeah, it's a true story. It's not a true story. Um, there are real brothers who are like the biggest bros on the planet and they really did uh, put an ad, an ad on Craigslist for classy ladies. Uh, I think the ladies that they ended up going with were like nice girls and uh, we are not. Uh, we are out to ruin lives and burn cities to the ground. Uh, so that's that's my objective in the movie is to ruin Zac Efron's life. Do you use a <laughs> and in real life? Too. I was gonna say. <laughs> so this is, as you allude to, this I, this is a different character than I feel like you've ever played by a long shot. Yeah, she's oh. such an idiot. I love her so <laughs> much. She's so stupid. Everything she does is like with such good intentions, and she's. Um, and, but what I love about this is like in the script. Um, when there's a scene where my character buys an erotic massage for the bride, and I just assumed, okay, this is gonna backfire, like the bride is gonna be grossed out and angry, and that's not what happened at all. The bride is super into it. Like, Kumail rubs her butt, and it's great. And, um, and it's sort of like, backfires eventually it's like she's making all these terrible decisions and it just goes well enough for a while like she's mr magoo and like she, like the the anvils are just not quite hitting her but then it all kind of blows up it's so great do you, do you feel you share much in common with her do you did you base her on anyone you know i mean is there is it all imagination or what just um empty your brain when you're playing her what are you doing uh i think there's a little al there's a little alice in everyone um you know, uh, she is just a little broken. She was left at the altar. Uh, she changes her hair a lot. She drinks a lot. She, um, she also, and it, like, there's some of this in the movie, but when we shot it, there was a lot more, and there's gonna be like so much bonus footage for this movie. We could make two movies right now. Um, but I pitched the idea to Jake that, because uh, my character has a thing for Zac Efron, and like, we're sort of, you know, uh, you know, dating or whatever you want to call it during this movie. And um, and I just wanted her to be filled with sexual rage for him. Like, she loves him so much. She's so into him and thinks he's so great. And she just wants to shove a sock in his mouth and bend him over. <laughs> and so that's, like, the vibe that I was going for. I'm not sure where that came from exactly, but I just knew that that is what a nice girl would want to do to someone like Zac Efron, Zac Efron. you know. Sure he has that experience you know, with many just, people. Just like dress him up in black lingerie and watch him clean her house. It's just... Right. I look forward to the extras. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you and Aubrey, yeah. close friends, before yeah. this. So how did that, that happen? Was one of you on board first? Was it kind of a package deal? Or um, how did it work? I mean, the thing is, we kind of had to go about it uh, in the, through the traditional avenues. But Aubrey and I got this script like a year before a director was even attached. And we were like, we're going to do this movie together. And then we kind of have to let men think they're in charge and running things. And then we're like, hi, yes, no, we're, we're here. So you can... <laughs> That part is settled now. Thanks very much. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of talking to Aubrey a, a bunch over the years. She, she's a very particular personality. She's out of her mind. She's, I mean, in the best possible yeah, way. Yeah, she's course. unhinged. <laughs> she's unhinged, super dry. Sometimes I just don't even know what's happening behind the eyes when I'm talking to her. Yeah, like a shark. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dead eyes kind of a thing. Um, can you define Aubrey for someone that knows her as well as you do? I mean, how do you how did you break through the dead eyes? Well, when I out? met Aubrey, I thought she like wanted to fight me. Uh, I met Aubrey when we made Scott Pilgrim versus the World, and we uh, there was like this Christmas party where we we're supposed to like mix and mingle, and I was like, "What is this girl's fucking problem?" <laughs> like, just I 
like, what is it with this girl? She's being so weird to me. And at the end of the night, she, like, grabbed my wrist. And I was like, do you want to fight me? Like, what's going on? And she grabbed my wrist, and she, like, pulled me, like, awkwardly close to her. And she was like, so are we best friends now or what? And I was like, oh, you're crazy. Oh, oh, okay. Like, she doesn't have a problem with me. She's just out of her mind. Yeah. She, uh, in the relationship in the film, does it mirror at all your relationship in life? She's kind of the alpha in this film. She's kind of the, yeah, she the really like, unstable, yeah, scary she like, one. She like uh, pushes me to do like uh, things that are not great decisions. Yeah, like uh, I mean, we like she texted me one night and she was like, "Do you want to go to Mexico tomorrow?" And I was like, <laughs> "Okay." Yeah, okay. And it ended up being like actually weirdly romantic because we didn't do a lot of research. So we ended up at this resort that was like obviously for couples. <laughs> and we were like, okay, I guess we're just going to like get stoned in the hot tub. I don't know what <laughs> we do here. Uh, moving on to Mr. Efron. Yeah. Uh, a, a wonderful How guy. How sweet, sweet is guy. he? Um, relatively in decent shape. He, well, it's I mean, all right. In between, <laughs> in between each take, is he just doing push-ups and eating chicken breasts? Literally, like, what's he doing? Literally, he gets in the tricep push, you know, the one that's harder, the one that I can't do at all, even in the girl position, uh, that where it's like, not this, it's like, like this, you're doing those. So he'll do like a bunch of those, like really angrily and really fast, and then he'll just hover like an inch above the ground, like he's a monk or something. <laughs> And it looks so easy. It's alarming. And he, uh, we were sad because this was almost going to be the movie that he didn't take his shirt off at all. And then suddenly the producers were like, wait, you don't take, no, 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 no. Like, so there is a scene where he gives me his shirt. So I get naked and he gives me his shirt um, basically so we can get Zach's torso in the movie. Right. <laughs> you don't need to focus group that. We know this, yeah, is, this is what sells. What people need yeah. in life. Um, <laughs> yeah, the dildo jokes don't translate very well, but Zac Efron translates shirtless. all languages. Yeah. You don't know languages needed. Um, because it's an R rated uh, comedy, and I know there's a, lot, uh, a fair amount of improv uh, involved, does it feel like when you're allowed to take where you can say anything, it's almost like too much freedom? Uh, I don't know who I was by the end of this movie. I was like, I can't call my parents right now. I will, like, I will say something about balls, and I, like, I don't need to do that. Um, I, when the real Mike and Dave, who put the Craigslist ad on, came, they were like, too tall and attractive for my tastes for anybody to look like that. I don't care for it. So they're like across this hotel lobby, and the director was like, oh yeah, that's the real Mike and Dave Stangle. And across a crowded hotel lobby, I was like, get your dicks out! Um, and that's not, like, the way I behave normally. So, um, and they didn't. So, they're supposed to be like the wild and crazy guys. Uh, but there are there is legitimately stuff in this movie that I don't remember doing. Like I lost my mind by the end of it, and it's so improv heavy that I'm like, there's a thing where I'm talking about blimps, and t I don't I don't remember any of it. It's like I blacked out. Also, sunstroke is a real thing, and my body I don't know if you can tell by looking at me, but really not built for sun and surf. <laughs> really, that island wanted to kill me. Let's take a look at the clip. Okay, great. Shall we? Mike and Dave need wedding dates. Very little memory of that happening. <laughs> I was going to say, so like, w w yeah, memory of a scene like that, like what percentage of that is scripted? How I many do, different versions of in that? In fairness, I do remember um, just trying to think of uh, what what terms I know about hedge funds because doing research is sort of counterproductive because she's not supposed to know. And I was like, I mean, I think she's dumber than me, but on this particular subject, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty dumb. So I just tried to think of all the terms I could think of. And then when I came up with the Bernie Mac and then deal, I was, pr I was pretty proud of myself for that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, the UN obviously is not, but I, it, is NASDAQ in the right ballpark? I don't, like, I, I was like, but why bother researching it? Because it's better if it's all wrong. <laughs> you also, um, as you can see from the trailer, guys, you can see this is shot in a beautiful location, Oahu. Yeah, very nice. Um, is there a downside to shooting in such a glamorous, beautiful location? I would think, like, sometimes shooting in a crappy location, there's nothing to focus on but the work. Yeah, it sort of nice bonds place. you because you're like, oh, this is bullshit. Right. And like, it's like it's like the equivalent of like, oh, case of the Mondays. It's like the weather's crappy. Right. But it was it was so beautiful. By the end of it, Adam Devine was like, if I see another fucking rainbow, 
I just want to see a filthy alley. I want to see like a rat eating its babies. I can't handle any more paradise. But yeah, I, I mean, Zach did really, Zach could have been the king of Oahu. Like he, like the locals were like following him around. They were so, he was like a god. It was so weird. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm just not really built for paradise. I'm like, I'm built for like a small room in like a dark, European city, just like reading a book and just being cranky. That's sort of my thing. So being in a place where everyone was happy, I was like, ugh, this is, what is this? Get out of my face. Okay, so the the film, obviously, the plot hinges on a a wedding and bringing wedding dates. Uh, Are you a good wedding guest? Do you enjoy the uh, being at weddings? Do you feel Um, like... I feel like I make a pretty good wingman. I'm not great in social situations, but like if you give me an objective, I can be pretty good. Um, I, I just don't know what to like talk about. Not great with small talk and stuff. But if you're like, oh, I, I'm trying to get in good with the parents and whatever, like I can, I can like talk you up. Yeah, I just need like a mission. Would you ever? Would you ever? Uh, a friend comes to you. Oh, Anna, would you do us the honor of officiating? At our wedding. That would be a terrible idea. I hope nobody does that ever. <laughs> I was a bridesmaid for the first and presumably last time. Right. Uh, I was the maid of honor. It was like my childhood best friend. And uh, I, w- I was actually like, oh, this is the only time I'll do this because I make sure to keep friends at like an arm's length so I have no responsibility. <laughs> That's actually a great way to live. <laughs> yeah, entire entire life, not just weddings, I would say. Uh, we're going to go to your questions in uh, just a moment or two. A couple of more quick things. I mean, as I said, clearly a super raunchy comedy. What's your like raunchy comedy go-to? What's your R-rated comedy that formed the Anna Kendrick that sits before us today? Oh, Is there um, one? I mean, Three? shit. When I when I was growing up, it was Billy Madison, um, and now I mean, I loved Dodgeball. Um, Wedding Crashers. Um, I don't know. What's what's your like raunchy comedy? Go good. I, w- I would go uh, in that same era. There's something about Mary. Was a oh good yeah. One. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I mean, to be honest, like I, I there's like a threshold for me with raunchy comedies, and I feel like I was so happy with the balance that our director struck because there was there were definitely times when I was like, oh, if I don't say the word dildo is it not going in the movie <laughs> and um and like he's really it's like he has he's a funny or die director this is his first feature yeah. and he just really nailed like the balance of it's like he found what was funniest about everybody and just did that and clearly my funniest thing is like nonsensical rambling improvs so there's a lot of that do, do you have comedy turnoffs are there subjects that you just don't find fu- you know some people find a kick in the groin always funny <laughs> a, a poop joke always funny what do you not find funny? What turns you off as a um, appreciator of comedy? I don't know. I mean, it's I feel everything. like a kick in the groin should make me like just sad. But it, it, if it's done well, you know, yeah, if it's like anything done well, if it's tasteful, you know, right. a tasteful <laughs> kick in the groin. Right. It's, yeah, that makes me laugh. Feels like a good segue for yeah. the audience, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure you guys have some wonderful questions out there. Hi. 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 Anna. All right. First of all, I just got to say, Up in the Air is one of my all-time favorites. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so thank you for your for that. Thank you for that film and for your brilliant performance. Yes, I did everything. Thank y- you. Y- yes, yes, you 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 carried it. <laughs> um, my question is, you, you've worked with so many great actors and directors. Are there any actors and directors or writers that you've dreamed of working with that you haven't gotten a chance to work with yet? Um, oh, lots. Um, but I, I feel like it's always like embarrassing to say like that you want to work with someone because then if you meet them. You're like, yeah, hi, I'm that, I'm that fangirl. But uh, if we're in like hypothetical imagination land, if I could work with like '70s Harrison Ford, that would be so great. Just f- like free love era, younger Harrison Ford. I would really. That's my dream. That's really my dream. Every night. Hi, Anna. Hi. So I've noticed you've been doing a lot more comedies, and you have your book coming out. So what have you learned about the comedic process on both the writing end and the acting end? Um. There's this amazing, um, uh, I don't know if it's Jimmy Carr's quote or if he just says it, and I'm going to fuck it up, which is why he is better than me at comedy, but um, about uh, how if, if you dissect a joke or dissect a frog, you, ha- you end up killing it by the end. Um, so uh, I do feel like I, in writing the book, I feel like I've seen too far behind the curtain, and I need to like experience some like heavy drama and read like some really sad novels so that I can enjoy comedy again because I do feel like I have seen how the sausage is made and that's a little weird and Adam has the same thing where he like 
feels like he can't watch comedy movies because he writes workaholics. Um, but uh, so what I'm saying is I've killed my own joy. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I don't know. I do feel like I learned that I am not the kind of person who can say like a joke needs to go here and then come up with it. It just like either comes to me or it doesn't because I can't. I'm not one of those people that can like uh, just create a joke if need be, which is why I would be a terrible staff writer on a comedy show. So, hi Anna. Hi. Um, I'm currently studying acting. Awesome. And one of my questions is, based on the craft, if you could go back and give yourself advice that you did not have, Ooh. that you kind of wish you had now, what would that advice be? For me, and I don't know anybody else's experience, but for me, I would say, like, uh, in terms of the audition process, I would say, like, if I could tell myself, like, slow down on all that stuff that you're blowing through and don't make such a meal out of the stuff that you think is important. And, you know, just try to make a choice that you think that someone else isn't going to make. Like, yeah, is that something? That's no, sort that's, of a like, thing? that's a great response because right. we're actually studying that right now. Oh, great. I helped. I did something good today. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Hey, I just wanted to know because you have, like, such a fun personality and, like, you seem super outgoing. Oh, you. He's a plant. <laughs> So, like, what would you be doing if you weren't acting? Like, would it be something where, like, you're involved with people or just in general? Like, what would I don't you like doing? people. Um, I, well, I would want to, uh, I would want to bake because um, I, I don't get to make anything. Like, I know, I know this is, like, an oversimplification, but, like, you don't, like, make anything. And it feels weird. Like, as a human being, it feels like you should be, like, creating something tangible. And I really liked baking because it was, like, an easy way to spend a couple hours and then have something that you could hold in your hand and that got you attention and validation, which is another thing I like a lot. So many life lessons today from Anna Kendrick and more to come in the book. Um, didn't I tell you she was classy, guys? Anna Kendrick, Mike and Dave. This was so much fun. Check it out. <laughs> and in real life, too. I was going to say, <laughs> so... This is, as you allude to, this, I, this is a different character than I feel like you've ever played by a long shot. Yeah, she's oh. such an idiot. I love her <laughs> so much. She's so stupid. Everything she does is like with such good intentions. And she's, um, and, but what I love about this is like in the script, um, when there's a scene where my character buys an erotic massage for the bride, and I just assumed, okay, this is gonna backfire. Like the bride is gonna be grossed out and angry. And that's not what happened at all. The bride is super into it. Like, Kumail rubs her butt, and it's great. And um, and it sort of, like, backfires eventually. It's like she's making all these terrible decisions, and it just goes well enough for a while. Like, she's Mr. Magoo, and, like, she, like the, the anvils are just not quite hitting her. But then it all kind of blows up. It's so great. Do you, do you feel you share much in common with her? Do you, did you base... Uh, very, very funny stuff, and it is just the tip of the iceberg, I guarantee. You'll want to check this out. It is a very good film, and uh, we've got an amazing actress here today, one of the most charming human beings on the planet. Let's give it up for Anna Kendrick. Come on up, Anna. I hear classy and charming, and I'm like, that's me. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> When you see that trailer, this movie yeah. is nothing but class. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a together lady. I'm a functioning adult. And everything's going great. It's perfect for you. I don't cry myself to sleep. <laughs> We're talking about the uh, character or you? You know what, Josh? <laughs> Semantics. <laughs> so um, it might surprise some people to know that uh, looking at that trailer, this is very loosely based on at least a, a, a germ of a it's true a, thing. Yeah, it's a true story. It's not a true story. Um, there are real brothers who are like the biggest bros on the planet and they really did uh, put an ad, an ad on Craigslist for classy ladies. Uh, I think the ladies that they ended up going with were like nice girls and uh, we are not. Uh, we are out to ruin lives and burn cities to the ground. Uh, so that's that's my objective in the movie is to ruin Zac Efron's life. Do you use a 